I want to give you a few basics about using Twitter right from the web application and a couple of tips about vocabulary words. So here we are on the Twitter homepage. You can see all of your tweets, who you're following, and who your followers are. When you move your mouse over a tweet, you'll see expand, which shows you the activity on that tweet, like replies to the tweet or retweets of it. You'll see an ability to reply, which you can also use the little panel down here for. You can click to retweet. You can add it as a favorite if you'd like to bookmark things. And there is a more here if you'd like to embed or email the tweet on a blog or whatnot. Another important thing to know about a tweet is that every tweet has details. This details link, while it doesn't look like it would be clickable, it is clickable. If you click on that details link, it will send you to a nice little pane which contains just that tweet. That's important if you ever want to embed a tweet on a page somewhere. And to do that, you generally need to have this status update number right here, which is the actual ID for that tweet. You can also go into a more and get the embed code for that tweet if you'd like to share it on a blog or other website. Let's start with some vocabulary. We see here an RT, which hopefully you've picked up as a retweet. There are two ways to retweet. There's the automatic retweet and there's what's called a manual retweet, which you actually type RT and copy the tweet and paste it. The main difference is that these automatic retweets all count up. On some tweets you can see something like view conversation and if you expand that you will see that tweet in the context of the conversation. So this is a great place to look at things like replies and mentions. So at the bottom of this conversation you see the at used right at the beginning of the tweet. That's a reply. So the difference between a reply and a mention a mention happens somewhere inside of the tweet. In the case of the second tweet and this fourth tweet, Levy recruits would see both tweets. But in the second tweet, everybody who's following Kenna would also see the tweet. Whereas with this fourth tweet, only people who follow both of them would see the tweet. So a reply happens at the beginning and is only visible to people who follow both parties. And a mention occurs in the middle somewhere or at the end and is viewable by everybody following the person who makes it. And let's go ahead and move on to the second tab at the top, which is the Connect tab. When you click on the Connect tab, you'll see all the activity that you're involved in. So these are all the people who have replied to you and mentioned you and retweeted you. And you can see that today it's been quite busy. If you ever need to check out your profile, you want to click on the Me tab, which is where you're going to see your profile and all of the tweets that you've made or retweeted. Again, on these tweets where you see View Conversation, you can go ahead and view the conversation back and forth between you and the person you're engaged with. In the upper right hand corner, you'll see a blue button with a little feather in it, and that's for composing a new tweet. So if you ever can't find the window to compose a new tweet, try that. If you've opened a whole bunch of tweets and you want to close them all up, there's a little button next to that to close all open tweets. And then finally, this gear icon I'd like just to take a look at because it's where you find your lists. One of the things you might find pretty valuable this week is creating your own list for this class of the people who are most engaging to you. To create a list, go to that gear icon, choose lists, and then choose create list. If I wanted to create a list, say for ROI, which was a popular topic on the discussion boards today, I might create a list for social media ROI. To find people to add to the list, I'm actually going to go and peruse a different list. So I'm going to go to one of my lists, and that's for the whole class. And when you go to somebody's list, if you're not subscribed to it, you will see a subscribe button here. So you can subscribe to the whole list without following everybody on the list. So I'm going to go ahead and look at the list members. And when I do that, I should see the bios next to everybody's picture. And this is why it's so important to have a good bio. As I browse through this page, I might look for people who do things like marketing or ROI. And keep in mind that you can also use your standard find commands on this page. So you could do a control F or a command F to pop up the little find window and then type something like marketing. And that's going to highlight on the page everybody who's got a marketing bio. So then I could say, all right, well, I'm going to add this person to my list. I'm going to add them to social media ROI and then close the box. And then I'll go find the next one that's highlighted. So here's somebody else that does marketing. So I'm going to add them to my list. 
and I can continue down the page doing that. Remember to close your find window or you'll wonder where all the funky highlighting is coming from. So last uh, is to save a search for our hashtag. So you see here that when I click in the search window, I have this hashtag right here. For example, if I wanted to save a search for the hashtag so me, which is a common abbreviation for social media, I first do the search and then in the corner you'll see a gearbox appear and you can go ahead and save that search. And then the next time you go to this window here, you'll see so me on the list near CN so me. Also from this gearbox, after you've searched, you can remove a saved search. So let's say I now want to remove so me. I would go ahead and do the search for it. And then when it pulls up, I could go ahead and remove the saved search. I hope that's enough to get you going. If you have more questions, make sure to ask.